we have identified as the main phenomena that are killing Europe, destroying Europe, tearing Europe apart. Two, first, involuntary underemployment. The millions of Europeans who either can't get a job or they can't get a full-time job and they're forced to have a mini-job, or those who are qualified, they have a PhD in physics and they have to do delivery runs working for a pizzeria. Secondly, involuntary migration. Migration is a fantastic thing. Human beings have spread across the planet since we were born, I believe, in Africa. And no country, no border should stop us from migrating if this is what we want to do. But the tragedy of forced migration is that people who have no interest in leaving their communities are forced to leave their communities and come to Berlin, go to London, go to Canada, not because of the weather or because of the food, but because they have no prospects in their own communities. How do we stop involuntary underemployment and involuntary migration, those corrosive forces throughout Europe? We need, we believe, at least five policies. One, we need to tame the financial sector, to tame banks, to tame the bankers, and to democratize money and credit. We need to create a regulatory system that prevents banks from being toxic. It is preposterous that Deutsche Bank has six times the exposure, six times the size of Germany's national income. No bank in Europe should have more than 20% exposure of the country's gross domestic product. There should be very harsh uh, limitations regarding bets and wagers and the equity ratio of banks. There should be, most certainly, a new public digital payment system that competes with the private payment system of the banks. Secondly, we need to fund green investment. It is ludicrous that in Germany today, when interest rates, the cost of borrowing money is zero, sometimes negative, you have the lowest level of investment in your history and the highest level of savings. You only need to state this to realize that we are all in trouble. If Germany, with zero interest rates and surpluses everywhere, has the lowest level of investment since 1950, then you know that the, this Europe is simply not sustainable. So we need to create an alliance, a partnership between investment banks like the KFW, like the European Investment Bank, and central banks, so that the money printing capacity of the central banks is harnessed to create investments into the things that we need to grow and disinvestment in the things we want less of, like diesel-powered cars, for instance. So we need to fund the innovators, but at the same time, we need to fund the society's maintainers, those good people who provide care in the communities, who look after all these mundane processes that are not high-tech and even innovative, but are essential, like those who clean the sewers, those who replace electricity lines, those who look after schools and hospitals. So we need basic good provision, and that needs to be funded properly. Fourthly, have you noticed that increasingly, with the use of digitization and artificial intelligence, social capital is multiplying? Every time I can see somebody here looking on the phone, every time you check on Google something, you search, you are contributing to the capital of Google. But Google is not sharing its income with you. So capital is becoming socially produced increasingly, but privately exploited. We need a universal basic dividend. We need a, a part of the shares of corporations to be publicly owned so that the dividends, the income that they produce, is distributed across society. If we don't do this, with automation exponentially rising, we're going to have more inequality, more instability, and in the end, even the corporations are going to suffer. And lastly, we need to defeat the Euro crisis. 
We have a whole chapter on how this can be done tomorrow morning. We do not need the treaty changes that Emmanuel Macron is proposing and Wolfgang Schäuble and Martin Schulz say nine to. We can reconfigure and recalibrate and redeploy existing institutions like the European Investment Bank, like the European Central Bank, like the European Stability Mechanism to deal with simultaneously the creation of more fiscal space for our governments, a proper banking union, a restructure of all public debt in Europe without haircuts and an investment-led recovery program for the Eurozone. If you read our European New Deal paper, we are proposing the creation of some very important new institutions that can be done on the basis of uh, uh, enhanced cooperation, which is already part and parcel of the panoply of the European Union, it's in the Lisbon Treaty. Create a European equity depository, a social wealth fund for Europe as a whole. The funding for that fund should come from the profits of our central bank. Do you know how much profits the ECB makes every year? Huge quantities. From all these dealings in purchasing bonds and, and corporate debt. From the target to intra-European payment system. From the dividends of corporations that I met, uh, that, that I mentioned. From a share of the monopoly profits that corporations make from intellectual property rights. From a pan-European inheritance tax. And finally, from a pan-European carbon tax. These funds must go into a common social wealth fund for Europe as a whole. We call it the European Equity Depository from which to fund the basic goods that I was referring to before and the universal basic dividend. Our European New Deal agenda is also presenting what we should do tomorrow morning in the very short term. For instance, the public digital payment platform, where you can implement this in less than a month. The anti-poverty scheme that we need in order to solidify Europe can be funded tomorrow morning from the profits of the European Central Bank. The European Investment Bank and KFW, European Central Bank Alliance, it only takes one announcement to start activating it. This can be done within a month. In the medium term, we are proposing the new bank regulation regime, the housing and jobs guarantee scheme, as well as the green transition investment program. And in the long ter longer term, the activation of the universal basic income. And once we have stabilized Europe and we have produced hope again, then we can sit around the table as European citizens to discuss how we're going to draft that which we are missing. A democratic constitution for Europe that replaces all the treaties and which gives Europeans an opportunity to create a European demos and put the demos back into democracy.